Ali. Neca did have 20 points in that second game. Four Olympians starting for Minnesota along with veteran Rebecca Brunson. And for LA, head coach Brian Agler has had the luxury of starting the same starting five all season long. Candace Parker, another great year, second to only Sue Bird in assists. So here we go. LA and Minnesota, first place is on the line. Los Angeles wearing pink. It is a breast health awareness game. Here we go to China. Christy Tolliver had seven threes. And now has one to start things off. And check that, that's a long two. Tolliver had seven threes against Minnesota. The second time these two teams played, they played twice within a three-day span, each winning on the other's home court. In fact, Minnesota's win here was LA's only home loss of the year. Well, and LA's key to getting back on track in their last three games has been the shooting of Christy Tolliver. Neka Aglumike coming up with the basketball. Aglumike, the front runner for MVP this season. Putting up ridiculous numbers. Parker left open. You can't do that. That is what makes Candace Parker so dangerous. Arguably the toughest matchup in the WNBA. 6-4, but she can shoot it like a guard. Ninth in the league in scoring, also in the top 10 in rebounding and assists. And LA's off to a quick 5-0 start. And Carson called for the foul as she was trying to guard Maya Moore. That's since Carson, her first year here after spending time with New York. And Brian Agler, you think the uh, coach of the year leading candidate? No doubt. I mean, the way that he has reconfigured this L.A. Sparks look, the way they take their defensive approach, he's done an outstanding job. They only won 14 games last year, did make the playoffs. Brunson gets a good look and buries it. And Brian Agler is known for his defensive reputation. That's what he did at Seattle. And this wasn't the L.A. Sparks team that was known for their defense prior to him coming and making those changes. And right now, they actually lead the league in defense. And Neka Aglumike puts one up from long range. So she's hitting 70% of her shots and actually has a higher percentage from three. Doesn't take a lot of them, but she has really developed that outside game. Foul scoring over Agumake. And that's the key matchup that Holly Rowe was talking about before the game. Neca and Sylvia fouls inside and outside. Who wins that battle head to head? Fouls at 6'6, six, six, about four inches taller than Agumake. Augustus off the mark. Fouls able to tip the ball to herself, and then she crashed awkwardly to the floor. And it gets really quiet here inside the Staples Center. Sylvia Fowles just won her third Olympic gold medal coming back from Rio. And a timeout is, has been taken on the floor. The shot goes up here by Simone Augustus and Fowles is trying to get in position there, and she slipped right there. You see that right knee bend up awkwardly behind her, so we hope she's okay. Being attended to over there by the training staff. Meanwhile, the, Natasha Howard, number three in blue, her third year out of Florida State, first year for Minnesota, has checked in to replace Fowles. And Natasha Howard is very mobile, so defensively she will be a good matchup with either Neca or Candace. Neca. Gets in on that inbounds play. She is two for two. Averaging just under 20 points per game and nine rebounds. Tolliver wanting a jump ball as she thought she tied up Augustus. And you see right away that LA wants to be aggressive defensively on screening action, especially with Simone Augustus. They want to make her a passer. Moore inbounds it over to Howard. Lindsey Whalen coming off a really good game. Six assists and a win over Connecticut. And Maya Moore calmly sinks a three-pointer. Beautiful by Maya. Nice ball fake. Gets a rhythm dribble. That's easy for her. That's a layup for Maya. Now Neca caught the ball almost. 
almost too far under the bucket, and she still was able to put it in. Well, L.A. is really good at the high-low game, especially because Candace Parker is such a great passer. Necca continues to move and gets herself in scoring position. Necca already was seven points. Parker's certainly having a great year as far as assists. Got Howard up in the air, then drives it in, and a blocking foul called late. Holly Rowe has more on Sylvia Fowles. Well, the Lynx athletic trainer has done a standard ligament test to see how stable that right knee of Sylvia Fowles is. I just saw Sylvia tell her teammates she's fine, but it was a very awkward bend of the knee. They're kind of trying to massage that out, get her knee feeling better. She was also complaining of some pain on her right hand ring finger where she kind of tried to catch herself awkwardly. It looks like she will be able to return after she's jogging to see how stable that knee is. Yeah. She's so important at what they do on both ends, Pam. On defense, she's contesting shots on the interior and on the offensive end. She's been stellar since returning from the Olympics. She has won two Defensive Player of the Year awards in this league, and her head coach, Cheryl Reeve, says she thinks she should win it again this year. So important and a very different role, moving a lot more on offense for Minnesota than we have seen in years past. Her first full year with the Lynx. Moore puts it up again. McCarville has checked in for Minnesota, and that goes out of bounds. It is L.A. basketball. And you see Elena Beard has the assignment of Lindsey Whalen because Ryan Adler believes that Whalen is the key to their offensive success, so he's going to put his best defender on her. Lumike now guarded by McCarville. Parker trying to get inside, and she was held up on her way. It's so interesting to watch Nepha and Candace play a two-man game inside the scheme of the offense. There are times when they're on the floor together that they're running their own offense. Very high basketball IQ, and they have great chemistry. So fouls back in the basketball game. Terrific news, certainly, for Minnesota. And now she goes right out to guard Agumike. Tolliver just absolutely being hounded by Whalen on defense. Got the shot up anyway. It is off the mark. And that's what you can hope for. Make it hard for Christy. Crowder space. You don't want her to take the shot, but if she's going to take it, make sure she sees the defense. Toller, Tolliver scoring 20 points in the first game between these two teams and then 24 points in the second game. Brunson has always had that nice little jumper out there. And right there, you see the importance of Sylvia Fowles. She draws the double team, which leaves Rebecca Brunson open for that shot. Brunson with four points and three rebounds already. As Minnesota cuts the lead to four, Wumake got absolutely bottled up by Fowles. You saw that they brought the double team, and that's a jump ball. Going back to that last score for Minnesota, the double is there. Candace Parker helping in on Sylvia Fowles, and Brunson has gotten so good at that face-up jump shot from the free-throw line. Fowles going to jump against Agumike. And it is controlled by Elena Beard. Gia Perkins in for Minnesota. Cheryl Reeve going to her bench early in this game. Parker from the outside, just a touch too strong. Shot clock malfunction is, it at, is at zero right now. And they're going to get that situated. Jantel Lavender on Adabovich will check in at the next whistle for Brian Agler's team. Brian trying to go a little bit deeper on his bench than he had earlier in the season. Yeah, Adabovich has been playing well, so why not? And there's the patent shot from Lindsey Whalen. She wants to get to the middle of the floor and shoot that pull up. Beard goes around a lot of people and uses that left hand. Cheryl, we wanted to take away Elena Beard's left. Make her use that right hand. Don't let her go strong side all night. She'll hurt you. She is left-handed. Whalen trying to get rid of it, and Perkins was able to bail him out. Runson, she is off to a terrific start. 
It's going to be so important for Rebecca Brunson to be ready to knock down that shot because this defense for L.A. is on attack, and they want to take away the main scores. Supporting cast has got to be ready. Brunson three for three from the floor. Minnesota down by two. Carson inside. He just got it to trickle in. Montgomery, Natasha Howard getting ready to come in for Minnesota. So fun watching Elena Beer play defense the way she has this season when she's healthy. Yeah, she missed a couple the of years. She changes the of the game. Yeah, and earlier in her career, missing a couple of years because of foot injuries, and she is really playing well as a veteran in her 13th season out of Duke, having a terrific year leading the league in steals. Defensive player of the year candidate for sure. 12 seconds left on the shot clock. Minnesota's hit six of its nine shots. Perkins to fouls. She probably got away with a step there and was fouled. Lavender called for the foul, and that sends Sylvia to the foul line, where she is shooting 71% for the season. It is WNBA Breast Health Awareness Week, presented by Kaiser Permanente. Visit WNBA.com slash assess risk and put awareness into action to reduce your risk of breast and ovarian Cancers. Adding Sylvia Fowles to the roster for Minnesota has been huge for their team. And Cheryl Reeves said, it's a risk when you're taking a player that's that big of a piece when we already had great chemistry. But Syl works hard, and she wants to make the coaches happy. And she's done that, I think. Done a pretty good job oh, yeah. of that. Finals MVP, that works. Remember, she sat out the first part of the season last year, wanting to be traded, ended up in Minnesota, and won a ring. Candace Parker called for her first foul. Renee Montgomery, she hit the game-winning shot with just under three seconds left in the first game of this series, breaking people's hearts here in L.A. Again, that was L.A.'s only home loss of the season. Tolliver whistled for the foul. Officials keeping close rein on this game. Montgomery guarded by Tolliver, decides to take her off the bounce and gets it to roll. Nice move by Renee. You see Renee Montgomery, Gia Perkins out on the floor. This second unit has a little bit of a different identity from the starting group, but that's what makes Minnesota's offense so effective. You have to know who's on the floor. Fouls block leads to the fast break for Perkins. This unit really focuses in on the defensive end of the floor. Brian Agler wants a timeout because it's a 12 to four Minnesota run. Defense to offense was the focus for the minute. They were once down by six points. Brian Agler taking the timeout now as his team has relinquished the lead. Well, there's been a noticeable difference since Sylvia Fowles got back on the floor. Her defensive presence on the interior taking away easy looks, but also on the offensive end. If L.A. is going to bring her that type of attention, then she'll get other players open. And Minnesota is red hot. 8 of 11 from the floor. That's 73%. That's Neko Gumake territory. Well, they have great offensive balance. You mentioned it, the four Olympians. 12 to 4 run since Fowles returned to the floor for Minnesota. So that's not a coincidence, is it? I don't think so. Renee Montgomery now with a defensive assignment on Tolliver during shoot around this morning. That was the message. Do not leave Tolliver. Stay with her the whole way. Christy with that miss. They want to make Tolliver think. She is the key to their offense. Usually a two guard, but playing at the point. She's been playing around 36, 37 minutes in their last three games. So she's got a heavy load on her shoulders. Natasha Howard inside. Nice ball movement to find fouls. 
one Sylvia thing, was six. One thing Maya talked to us about was how they had to keep their spacing and play unselfish, really move the basketball. They thought that was a key in their loss to L.A. These are the top two teams as far as assists in the league. L.A. averaging 21, Minnesota just under that. And right there, Maya Moore brings two defenders. Candace Parker just standing in no man's land there and gets caught. Howard gets the pass. Christy Tolliver can't do anything with Sylvia Powell. No, that's not a good matchup for them. That was L.A.'s first turnover, by the way, to give it back to Minnesota. Fouls, Perkins, two. Minnesota looks very much in sync. Well, and at some point, you have to think about forcing Sylvia Fowles to score in a one-on-one -on -one situation. They're collapsing and overhelping on the interior, and that's leaving shooters open. It's two straight turnovers now for L.A. Minnesota, by the way, has made seven straight shots from the floor. I'm actually surprised that Brian Agler is sending so much attention to Sylvia Fowles. I would make her prove that she can score consistently one-on-one. -on -one. And now the run with Fowles back in the game is 16-4, to Minnesota. Fowles set a screen and a whistle. They're going to get L.A. for the foul. Genia Belyakova. Number 10, a rookie from Russia, called for her first foul. And look at the numbers. Both teams shooting well. And Fowles is back on the free throw line where she's two for two. More WNBA action coming your way as the season winds down. Sunday, a doubleheader on NBA TV. New York at Dallas at 4.30 Eastern. LA at Seattle at 7 Eastern. And a week from tonight, the Lynx in Chicago on ESPN2 to take on Elena Deladon in the sky. WNBA.com or the WNBA app has more. I would not want to play Elena Deladon in the Ooh. Chicago sky. They have been on a mean push towards the end of the regular season. Seattle as well picking up some good victories, and they are really starting to come together. Deladon now leading the league in scoring, taking that over from Tina Charles. And Fowles whistled for her first foul. I like the call by Brian Agler. Let's go at Sylvia Fowles. She's been hurting us on one end of the floor. Let's go inside and see if we can make her hesitant by helping her pick up a couple fouls. Last two games, Sylvia averaging 16 and a half points, 12 and a half rebounds. And she already has seven tonight as Lavender misses the first of two. Fowles also had five steals in their win over Connecticut. I mean, at 6'6, six, six, that number is just exceptional. Lavender gets one of two. Jantel being mentioned for sixth player of the year this season in the WNBA. She's definitely the favorite. If for nothing else, the level of dependency and efficiency, Brian Adler considers her a starter. Did start the last couple of years and has been terrific this season. NECA comes up with the loose ball. Christy Tolliver with only two points. Agwuma K got stuffed by Natasha Howard as she went to her left hand. A yeah, good tie up there by Howard. Howard picked up in the sign and trade deal that sent Devereaux Peters to Indiana. Ball tipped around. Anna Cruz couldn't get it until now. And now the shot clock is turned off. Howard left unguarded down the lane. No communication defensively in transition for L.A. That's just too easy. And now Minnesota picks them up full court. And this is Minnesota's biggest lead, up by eight. They trailed by six earlier in this quarter. And I think we're seeing one of the biggest differences between these two teams. Brian Adler had his bench unit in. Minnesota had a lot of their bench unit in. That's even necessarily in terms of statistics. It's the experience they bring. Gia Perkins, Renee Montgomery. These are players that have been in the trenches in other places. They bought that experience here. Quality minutes, and they don't hurt the team. There's not a big drop off. They have such a talented starting five. Parker missed it after Howard hit the deck. Los Angeles went the last three minutes and 50 seconds of the quarter without a field goal. 
Cheryl Reeves team up 26 to 18 after one quarter. When we come back, Holly Rowe will talk to the head coach of the defending champs. Limiting NECA. So what did you think when she came out and scored seven straight points? What did you change there to get her stopped? Uh, we didn't change anything. We actually didn't execute the game plan. But more importantly, Holly, no matter what's going on in the game, what's more important is what's going on with you. And like I told today in shoot around, we are so proud of your strength and your fortitude and the way that you're tackling uh, breast cancer. And us bearing the name Mayo uh, is no more significant than a day like today for breast health awareness. And so we are so proud of you and we stand with you and we think you're absolutely amazing. Thank you, Coach. Uh, should I follow this up? But I have another basketball question. Uh, no, your you second. What we're doing today is important as what you're doing. Okay, thank, thank you, Coach. You. Thank you. We certainly echo that sentiment for uh, Holly Rowe, who is uh, out here, and she's been sort of our team mom the whole time with ESPN. And uh, Holly did, what, what did she do? What dance was that? Oh yeah, she dabbed uh, in practice today. Yeah. Miss Link showed her some love, and Holly's going strong, man. She had what? Notre Dame, Texas. She was awesome there, and she is the glue to holding us together again today. Yep. So we're, we echo those sentiments, certainly. Meanwhile, Minnesota, how about a 25 to a 21 to 5 run, excuse me. And Parker and Tolliver are now a combined two for seven from the floor. Renee Montgomery has it rim out. And these are the teams with identical 24 and 5 records. Both teams have won three straight games heading into this. LA had a little bit of a hiccup. They lost two of three going into the uh, Olympic break. Lost their first two games, but have won three straight since. But they are up against it here against Minnesota. Well, they had a brutal stretch where they were on the road for nine straight games. So being home has been good for this team, but they collected their wits about them before that road stretch was over and got some quality work. Winning at San Antonio with Dallas and then here against Indiana. And Lavender gets the shot. Right here, LA's got to focus on getting a stop. Minnesota had 26 points in the first quarter. And you mentioned it, shooting it had a high percentage. Making their last nine shots. Here's Chelsea Gray, who is fouled on the way down the court. Gray in her first year with Los Angeles, fouled by Anna Cruz. Christy Tolliver getting a rest right now. You talked about just her struggling a little bit from the field early, and I think she forced a couple shots. One thing that NECA told us is that we have to have player movement and ball movement. They are so fluid in their motion. They pass the ball well. They're great with the assists. So they've got to get that type of motion to get the scores they want. Blumake has been quiet for a while. Now missing from three. Scored seven early points for LA, but has been shut out since. Simone Augustus gonna come in now for Anna Cruz from Minnesota. Cruz coming back after playing in Rio for Spain in the Olympics. And this is a bigger lineup on the floor for LA with Lavender, Parker, and NECA all there at the same time. You see Minnesota shooting very well, 67% from the floor. They are second in the league behind LA in field goal percentage. Drew McKay comes up with the rebound and then is fouled by Howard. One thing I love about the way that NECA rebounds is not only is she often rebounding out of position, but she gets clean rebounds. So there's no doubt that she's got it. She's able to push it up the floor. That seems like a small detail, but if you are trying to get in a fast break situation, those clean rebounds are very important. She is having an absolutely brilliant season. Threw the ball away that time. Maya goes over to Simone Augustus, who actually missed a mid-range jumper. You don't see her do that that often. Aguma K got blocked by Howard. Natasha Howard coming behind the play, and now Sylvia fouls, gathers, and scores. There is no answer for 6-6 six, six Sylvia fouls. Coming into this game, we said, will she dominate with power or will LA dominate with mobility in the post? And so far, it's been all Sylvia. Sylvia with 
nine points in 11 minutes. All right here, what a block by Natasha Howard on Neka Ogumake, and on the other end, a basket for Sylvia Fowles. But look at this, right? That's just, she thought she had a layup. Sylvia Fowles talked about how she is locked in mentally. The team got a couple of days off after the Olympics, then played a game, and Cheryl Reeve gave them two more days. And they've come back refreshed since then. Chelsea Gray with the bucket. Remember, there are four Olympians on this Minnesota team. Four American Olympians. Anna Cruz played for Spain. Chelsea Gray whistled for the personal foul. It's been so cool to watch all the different players go from the Olympics and coming back here to the WNBA. Not just those that played for the U.S., but we've got Serbia, we've got Spain, we've got so many different countries represented. That's what's special about the WNBA. The best of the world come here to play. Minnesota with this eight-point lead. Maya Moore called for a foul. That is personal foul number two for Maya, who only has three points. But her team is up by eight. Maya telling us about how excited her team was to play in this game. They certainly know the ramifications of it, but it's a balance between being excited and not getting too amped up and putting too much emphasis on one game. Yeah, but if they both went out, it comes down to home court advantage. It's your opportunity to get to the finals, and that's important, and get there and have an advantage. Parker able to get the rebound after NECA just got one off before the shot clock expired. A Grumike three for seven from the floor. Shot clock winding down, and a foul called with two seconds left on the shot clock. Remember, it just resets to 14 seconds now after an offensive rebound. Simone Augustus with the personal foul. Fifth team foul, so Chelsea Gray shooting free throws. Second year out of Duke, her first with L.A. after coming over from Connecticut. We are celebrating the final weeks of the WNBA's 20 to season by giving fans something extra to get excited about. Do you want to know what that is, LaChina? I know. The question is, do you know, Pam? I have no idea. So but if you go to, to WNBA.com, you'll know. <laughs> you know. You I just don't, don't really want to go tell. Me and the internets don't really. Oh, stop. Get along. Six point lead for Minnesota. Grumake almost got a foul and then knocked the pink headband off of Maya Moore's head and committed a foul. Maya with a double headband. She's got the black band and then the pink band for breast health awareness. The black headband is, that's really is doing that for the work. Hair? No, that's doing the work. And oh, the okay. pink is more cosmetic. I gotcha. Maya getting everything set before she inbounds. See, there you go, Pam. Just learned a little something. I thought it was a hair thing. Augustus for three, and she puts it home. Simone Augustus, that's only the 30th three she has taken this year and the ninth make. Not a high percentage from out there. You don't see her take a lot from distance. Well, she usually likes to come off and curl, but nice pass and finish by Parker. But good read of the defense on that screen by Fouts. And Wumake gets the assist. Augustus able to get space around Gray. And now Parker trying to get something going. Abu McKay slices down the lane and she is fouled. The force with which Neka Abu McKay attacks the basket is what makes her special. Foul on Brunson. Neka Abu McKay will be shooting free throws when we come back.
to Los Angeles. Well, she's going to get a chance to score. Awareness is so important tonight. And Jenny, you're here with the organization Bright Pink. What is that organization and how are they helping women? Um, Bright Pink is actually the only nonprofit um, in the nation that focuses on early detection and early detection and awareness um, of breast and ovarian cancer in young women. Not only do we educate women, but we empower them to turn awareness into action and be proactive with their health starting at a young age. I'm learning that myself about how important early detection is. So what can young women watching this game tonight do to be proactive about their health? I think if you take one thing away tonight, um, it's to start to determine your own personal level of risk for breast and ovarian um, cancers. And you can do that by um, doing this Assess Your Risk tool through Bright Pink. And you go online to WNBA.com slash assess your risk, and you can start there. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for sponsoring this thank game. We appreciate much. it so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Holly. And yes, early detection is so key. We have our pink game here tonight in L.A. And there's a foul as uh, Simone Augustus has a chance to shoot free throws. And Holly Rowe has also talked a lot about skin cancer and making sure that what Holly says, you can be cute, but cover up to stay cancer free. And I remember that line from Holly, but very important early detection, but also preventive measures as much as you can. WNBA Breast Health Awareness shooting shirts available on WNBAstore.com and at the NBA Store on Fifth Avenue in New York. 100% of the proceeds donated to Bright Pink. Both teams have the shooting shirts on and they're really cool. So go to WNBA.com for that. Fouls. I mean, Sylvia Fouls, not only did she grab the rebound off the missed free throw, but she just hit a face-up jump shot. Now, this is after going down earlier in the game with what looked like a knee injury. She has been exceptional. Leads all scores with 11 points, four or five from the floor. Shot clock dwindling. Christy Tolliver back in the game. Howard able to get in the face of Lavender. But the ball stays with the Sparks, and Neko Gumake let out a shout. She is trying to get her team amped up. The Sparks off to a slow start, just not in a rhythm on either end of the floor. And NECA's leadership on this team is the one thing you don't hear talked about often. She is the voice in practice. She is the player calling other players out. She has really taken over this team from that standpoint. NECA had seven early points, finished, hit her first three shots, had missed four straight before she buried that one. And that right there is what she has done so well, finding an angle, great footwork, her mobility, she can finish from anywhere. Moore threw it away, trying to get to Augustus. L.A. tries to bite into this six-point lead. For more on NECA, let's go over to Holly Rowe. Well, that last play from NECA Ogumake is exactly what she's talking about when she said she has improved as someone who reads the defense. She read what Maya Moore was going to do, so she went the opposite direction. She said early in her career, she just decided... She just relied on being an athlete. Now she's a much smarter player. She practices those situations in practice, so when she's on the floor, she can read what the defense does and react in a smart way. You're absolutely right, Holly. I mean, that is what makes a good player great. And she said she really started to focus on her finish at Stanford, that Tara Vanderveer was one that said, you should shoot 90 to 95% around the basket, so high standards. And there you see Neca taking a little contact, but she can find space around the basket like no one else in this league. If you leave a little bit of light, she's gonna score. Natasha Howard just picked up her third foul, sending Candace Parker to the line. And then you put on top of that, the technical excellence, the heart, the drive. She never takes a playoff. She plays 100% all the time. Just an exceptional player who is having a breakout season in this, her fifth year out of Stanford. We're going to take a timeout. Neko Gumake's team down by five in this huge regular season matchup between the two best teams in the league. Each game here, two teams both with identical 24 and 5 records. The best record in the league on the line. And remember when. You, 
The top two teams will get a double buy into the semifinals, but tonight's winner, they'll be the first one to do so. And that's, that's important so you avoid those one and done games in the first two rounds. Yeah, I mean, we're excited about it, but if you're one of these WNBA teams, if you can play your way out of that position, you want to do that. Not only do you get some rest there, but any team can beat any other team one time to advance. So that's a dangerous position, but I'm excited about it, Pam. It's going to be great. I love the new format. And these two teams, along with New York, have clinched spots. I know Rebecca was talking about how Parker and Taller have been quiet for L.A. How about more Augustus and Whalen, a combined three for ten for Minnesota and only nine points, well, and they're still up? We're looking at two of the best coaches in this league. I mean, Brian Agler and Cheryl Reeve, they're not going to let you beat them the way you want to. So they're going to take away your main components. You have to make adjustments, but also your supporting cast has to be ready to step up. More shooting that free throw after a defensive three-second call on Los Angeles. Ryan Agler, the front runner for Coach of the Year. And his team down here by six. More left open. And she's off again. And Wumike skies for another rebound. Parker got lucky. She tried to go switch back with Elena Beard, and Maya got off a free three. Yeah, had a good look at it, didn't she? Good defense by Danielle McCarvel on NECA, bodying her up. Minnesota's used different players on NECA. That's nifty by Chelsea Gray. Gray has continued to grow. She's in the best shape that she has been in. Light on her feet. And learning Brian Adler's expectations. That is Lindsey Whalen to a T, drawing contact. A Blumake called for her first. You really have to know where Lindsey Whalen is in transition. Now, Gray just scored, so she is running to catch up. Whalen takes the contact and still has an opportunity to score that as she heads to the deck. Tells you how strong Whalen is, because Wumake bumped her pretty good, and as you mentioned, Whalen's still able to get the shot off. Lindsey's only taken one field goal attempt. Goes one for two on that trip at the line. But the offensive rebound gives Minnesota a fresh 14. And no surprise, it's Rebecca Brunson with the O board. She has six rebounds tonight. Risky pass, shot clock winding down. Whalen got a shot off, hoping that a foul was called, and it was not. Gray, two in a row. No, just Ooh. rimmed out. And she had Christy Tauber wide open in the corner. When Gray comes into the game, Christy can move to the two. So that allows her to just focus only on shooting the ball. Tauber one for three tonight, only two points. Averaging 22 and a half. First game, 20 points. Second game, 25. Hits seven threes against Minnesota. But they've done a good job on her defensively tonight. Now in the backcourt on Parker. Agwumike trailing the play, limping a little bit for L.A. Yeah, Janelle McCarvel has been physical with NECA, and it's worked cutting down on her effectiveness down low, but she might have taken a hit there. Parker, excuse me, Agwumike already playing with a hurt finger in San Antonio, tore a ligament in a finger on her left hand, her non-shooting hand. Didn't even tell Coach Agler until after the game that she was hurt. So tough. She's a warrior. Whalen back to the line. Fouls comes in to give Brunson a break. And Renee Montgomery will come in for Whalen. Giving the 34-year-old veteran a break. Seven-point advantage for the Lynx. Parker guarded by fouls. Now it's Perkins on Tolliver. Shot clock winding down, and a foul on Whalen, who says that Perkins shot her leg out, and that's why there was contact. Excuse me, the gray shot her leg out. 
Chelsea Gray finding a way to contribute in this game. She'll go to the free throw line. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. Better removed by Gray. She went to Duke. Yeah, smart guy school. Not a veteran yet, though. She's got to earn her stripes there. That's please. true. She's only in her second year. But a smart move. Let's put it that way. Yes. Whalen picks up the foul. Chelsea hits them both. Chelsea Gray contributing off the bench tonight. Has scored eight points in only nine minutes. She averages four per game. Montgomery just in for Whalen hits. was Montgomery with that game-winning three with under three seconds left that beat L.A. here on June 21st. That's a good shot for Renee's confidence. Hasn't shot the ball extremely well as of late, so that could get her going. Tolliver fouled underneath. I think they're going to get McCarville. It was the original call. And it will stick. Byron Jarrett, Daryl Humphrey, Jonathan Sterling, our officials tonight. Christy Tolliver has been called for a technical foul. Maya Moore misses the free throw. So Tolliver was fouled by McCarville, then was called for a technical, and now Christie will shoot her free yeah, throws. I am not sure what Christie did to get that technical call. Christie with only two points, make it three. Averaging 14 points per game, 16th in the league. LA with three of the top 20 scorers in the league. Tolliver, Agu McKay, and Parker. And it's a five-point lead. Three bench players in for Minnesota. Fouls had it tipped away by Agu McKay. You got to pick up Parker right away in transition. Maya Moore does exactly that. Parker with the screen. Tolliver got it back to her. A little fade away that won't fall. Parker's frustrating night continues. And now the shot clock's off. And that is it for the first half. Minnesota, Cheryl Reeves' team trailed by six in the first quarter, but they take a 42 to 37 lead. Into the break, Holly Rose standing by with Sylvia Fowles. Well, Sylvia, early in this ball game, you were getting some serious work done, but then you had a scary fall. You were down a long time. What was going on there when you were on the floor for such a long time? I rebound, but I, I stemmed my leg back too far and kind of hurt my knee a little bit, but I'm all right, I'm giving it a go. As well as you guys have played and your bench has come in and played very well, what concerns you that your lead is diminishing here? Um, we, we got a lot of turnovers. Let me not turn overs and get into more of an uh, offensive flow and we'll be all right. How do you keep NECA contained in the second half? Uh, just keep going at her. Um, giving her your best shot. Thanks so much. Thank you, Holly. Both the Ghoul McKay and Fowles with 11 points to lead their respective teams. Best overall record in the league is on the line in this game. Minnesota up by five at the break. Stay tuned for the WNBA Halftime Report presented by State Farm. Coming up after these messages with Doug Kazarian and Rebecca Lobo. A compass, and you mentioned Sylvia Fowles playing great on both ends of the floor, but Waylon Moore and Augustus, we're not used to seeing that. Yeah, there was some foul trouble for both teams, so now you can play a little more free here to start this third quarter if you're both coaches. I thought that L.A. missed a step when Brian Agler first went to his bench. His bench is not as experienced in these situations as Minnesota is, and Minnesota's bench, I thought, gave them a burst. And Parker and Tolliver have yet to get going. Tolliver has torched Minnesota in the first two games with 20 and 25 points, respectively. The 
but she struggled in the first half, also was called for a technical foul. In fact, Tolliver did not even take a shot in the second quarter. Sylvia Fowles called for her second personal foul. Well, one thing that Cheryl Reeves said was, it's not about forcing Tolliver to miss shots, it's about not letting her take shots. So that is why you see the low number of attempts. Both teams have one win in this series, each winning on the other's home floor. Parker, that's just not a good shot, trying to draw the foul, but didn't get it. She's two for seven. Brunson, Brunson slips in, gets her own rebound. Great play by Beard to knock it away. But Minnesota hangs on with 13 seconds left on the shot clock. Minnesota in that second quarter shot only 33% from the floor, but still LA could not chip in to get any closer than six points. More, oh. Beautiful read by Maya Moore coming off of the screen. Gets the high percentage look in the paint. Lead is up to seven. LA led by six in the first quarter. Essence Carson, we haven't seen her since the first quarter, draws the foul. And Essence is so important to what LA does. When she doesn't play well, the Sparks don't play well. Going back to that score by Maya Moore, beautiful curl, up fake, gets Candace Parker in the air, and that's just too easy, Pam Ward. Moore having a brilliant season. Her numbers are down a little bit, but because her minutes are down, she's actually more efficient, scoring more per 40 minutes on average than she did last year. She seems to be letting the game come to her and allowing her team to evolve. They have so many weapons that Maya doesn't have to have big numbers on the scoring into the ball every night. For more on Essence Carson, let's go over to Holly. Since Carson, I did ask Coach Brian Adler at the half, why is she okay? He said, no, it was just a rotation thing. But she gives them their strength and toughness defensively, so they need her to come alive in the second half. Play has been so good. A professional-type attitude to this team. She's got next-level toughness, her intensity. So she needs to be on the floor for this team to have success. Averages eight points per game, has their best three-point percentage. Elena Beard, her first foul. Carson playing here in L.A. for the first time after playing her first eight in New York. Carson picks up the foul as she hip-checked Maya Moore. And Maya's got so good at anticipating that contact coming off of the screen. She knows when the defender's late coming out, how to use her body right here. She sees Carson as a step late. And takes advantage of it with that quick step. Second foul on Essence Carson, and now Maya will inbound. Lindsay Whalen took only one shot in the first half, and she hit it. This match inside, Sills got Essence Carson on her. Well, you don't need to worry about a mismatch when Maya Moore can do that. Nope, not when you're open. Minnesota up by seven. Foul away from the ball as Tolliver was held by Whalen. Second on Lindsay Tolliver in the first half. Just one of three. That's amazing right there that she only got three shots off and at least a couple of them were forced. Well, that's what Minnesota talked about all shoot around. It's not letting her get shots off because once she gets in a rhythm, which she has in this series, she can be deadly. Tolliver was so great in the first two games the of this series. Beard misses, good tip by Brunson to keep it going. Great denial by Lindsey Whalen on Christy Tolliver. Moore with a little crossover. Brunson with another rebound. She's got eight tonight. And now here's Parker. 
She's been silent for most of the night. Little floater, and that won't go. Parker, two of eight from the floor. Augustus behind her back, puts it up, puts it in. And that's what Simone does so well. One-on-one, -on -one, she can shake a defender, and then she elevates for that jumper. LA's missed six straight shots. Got off to a hot start at five of their first six, and since then they've been like that. They're not good. LA's got to get ball reversal. They have got to let the shot clock run down because they've got to get multiple players, multiple touches, make the Minnesota Lynx defense really have to work. I was going to say, is it Minnesota's defense here or? I think it's more decision making by LA. They are forcing it. Tolliver with the miss and she gets frustrated after it. Tolliver, the kind of player who definitely wears her heart on her sleeve. You kind of know what she's thinking by her reactions out there. Brunson couldn't hang on, but Agul McKay got a finger on it, so it stays with Minnesota. Seven seconds to shoot. And this is where things really change for Minnesota in the first half, is the substitution of Brene Montgomery and Gia Perkins. Nothing flashy from those two, just a different level of energy, the defensive pressure. They were able to take L.A. out of their offensive flow. And they're back in again. Fouls, gathers, misses. Los Angeles has gone over six and a half minutes now without hitting a field goal. They've only had have two points here in the third quarter. Beard at least forces the issue. Well, one thing that Decca talked to us about in terms of how LA got back on track after they had lost some games was they started to focus on the paint and how important it is for them to score inside. So I like the attack off the bounce, maybe some guard posts up, try to mix it up, but the outside shots aren't falling. I feel like they're forced on some of these possessions. Beard at the line after being fouled by Agwumike. Tolliver goes out for Chelsea Gray. Gray gave him a lift with eight points in 10 minutes in the first half. But Tolliver, after absolutely punishing Minnesota in the first two games of the series, sits down with only four points on one of four shooting. Waylon and Moore not in the game right now for Minnesota. Perkins with the miss. Parker took it away from Brunson. On the fly and just not working. They're just not connecting And that's tonight. usually an easy two from Candace Parker to Neko Gumake. Candace Parker at 6'4", averaging over five assists per game. Only Sue Bird is averaging more. She's having a terrific season, but boy, an off night tonight. Well, she sees the floor very well. One thing that really hurts LA from time to time is their turnovers. And they have got to get back to their precision passing. And Minnesota is definitely part of disrupting that. Justice drives on Beard, a contact and a charging foul on Simone. Timeout on the floor. Neko Gourmake and company down by eight. LA looking for its first field goal in over seven and a half minutes. Going back to things. Indiana and Atlanta won tonight. Phoenix lost. And it's all important to be above that cut line, the top eight, regardless of conference, in the playoffs. And Chicago looks so good on the offensive end, a well-oiled machine. But watch out for Atlanta, just like we remember from years ago. That's that team that no one really wants to play because they're so athletic and their aggressive style in the open court. Gray with the air ball. LA's missed 10 straight shots. And this is a team that is first in the league in field goal percentage. They're shooting 33% tonight. That just tells you how good the Minnesota Lynx are on the defensive end. LA shooting a season low 33% from the floor. Inside, that's a low percentage pass. Foul bumped Agumike. The other thing that 
Minnesota's bench does is when they come into the game, L.A. really has to think about who's defending them and where they're going to get shots. But you see the physicality in the post. Nega's undersized, but she is not backing down. Foul's a little physical there with Nekka. Nekka fouled by Sylvia, who picks up her third. Still giving you that face like, whatever. <laughs> that was fake. Finally, a field goal, and no, take it away. Gray called for the offensive foul. And the Sparks are frustrated. Elena Beer talking to one of the officials. Right here, Chelsea Gray makes a move, and yeah, I would have to agree with the crowd. As I felt like Chelsea Gray did not at all displace the defender. And then on the other end, Sylvia Fowles scores inside. That was a good acting job, and Gray had to pay for it. This is the biggest lead of the night for Minnesota at 10. Yeah, Montgomery did a good job of selling that to draw the charge. Carson, finally, there you go. Like Carson has to be a threat. The floor has to open up for NECA and for Candace to function. So if Chrissy Tolliver is not hitting outside shots, someone has to. L.A. went nine minutes without a field goal. Going back to the second quarter. Now Parker's fouled. Anna Cruz just back into the game for the Lynx. Los Angeles has been away for an extended period of time. In fact, their game against Indiana the other day was their first home game since before the Olympic break. They've been on the road. Brian Agler told us that being home, he says, you get healthy. And not just he's talking about physically, but mentally, that you're able to regroup. And there you see that long road trip. And they stumbled a bit heading into the Olympic break, lost their first two coming out, then beat Indiana here on Sunday, but this is not an impressive performance at all tonight. Well, sometimes you got to get home, regroup, because when you're losing on the road, it's hard to find your mojo. Well, they did that. They regrouped and started to win some games, but home crowd has been taken out of this game because of the way the Minnesota Lynx have played. It's a good crowd, late arriving crowd, but they're just trying to get fired up. Maybe Parker's block will help. And then underneath, more physicality. That's going to be another foul on well, Tasha Howard, excuse me. And Minnesota has been physical with NECA, and now she's making the officials aware of it. And it's four fouls now on Howard. And Rebecca Brunson's going to come back in from Minnesota. Neko Grumake heading to the free throw line. Neko with 11 points, five rebounds. And Brian Agler before the game, we were talking about the MVP race. And Coach Agler says that Neko is having a season of the ages. We talked about the 70% free throw, uh, field goal percentage, which is on pace to break a season record. And something that a lot of people don't talk about, she's the defensive stopper. She draws very difficult, if not the most difficult, defensive assignments every game, and she will guard a variety of players. And it starts with her efficiency. I mean, 70%. Cheryl Reeves said she's the MVP by far as well. I mean, that just does not happen. And teams have thrown every defense they can at NECA. She's still there, but you're right. Her defense is what separates her from other candidates. Cheryl Reed, the opposing coach, saying that she is hands down the MVP. Fowles gets one to roll in. The one thing LA has not been able to do on the inside is keep Sylvia Fowles from getting position. She has roamed around however she wants to, whenever she wants to. She's six of eight from the floor. Sylvia, Tolliver hounded by Cruz now. 
scoops one up, gets it to go, and she's fouled. And Christy gives you that it's about time look. Well, and this was working for Christy in the last three games. She's gone to the free throw line more often. She's starting to put the deck, the ball on the deck more. And here, showing a lot of toughness. I mean, she is desperate to get a score, and most teams are going to run her off the line. So her ability to finish around the rim comes in handy. The outside shot has not been there for her tonight, so she went inside and then badly missed that free throw. Christie went over 3,000 career points in her last game. That was a win here against Indiana on Sunday. I was listening to Simone Augustus, and someone asked her what she thought the advantage was for Minnesota in this game, and she said, our experience. And that is showing how many big games has this core group from Minnesota played in together. The three WNBA championships in the last five years, they've been in the wars, they've been in the battles, and they're playing like it tonight. Finals for the last five years, three championships, including last year, trying to be the first team since the LA Sparks in 2001 to go back to back. Turnover almost forced, but just two seconds left on the shot clock as Whalen and Augustus come in for Perkins and Cruz. This Minnesota franchise sort of stumbling out of the gate, but since 2011, boy, Cheryl Reeve came in, now in her seventh year. There were seven coaches in nine years before Reeve. She came along, they got some nice lottery picks. Maya Moore, and then the, the trade for Whalen. And they have really taken off since then. Well, I mean, 2011 is when Maya Moore got to that team, and that's really when things change. And you hear some different discussions about Maya and how she contributes to her team. Well, the one way that's obvious is her championship mindset, her reach for perfection, her mentality. Players affect the game in different ways, but she has enhanced everyone else who's on the floor with her because she hates to lose. Very, very competitive. And she goes out there and does things in a variety of ways to help her team, leading them in so many categories. Not just scoring. Now Maya guarding Parker. Parker shoots over her. And it's short. Candace two for nine tonight. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. It's Oliver guarding Brunson. Sylvia to Whalen, who put it in left-handed. Oh, he got caught ball watching, and Lindsey Whalen made him pay. Seven-point lead. 17 seconds left on the shot clock for L.A. Trailed by five at the half, and down now by seven. Had that big nine-minute drought where they didn't score a field goal. I mean, but to be shooting 36% from the field and only be down seven. Could be worse. No, could be a lot worse. <laughs> Tolliver for three, yes! Christy Tolliver has hit a three in every game this season. And that trims the lead to four. You're right, LaChina, it looks like this thing should have been over. But it's only a four-point ball game. Minnesota has gone cold from the floor. 10-4 run, and they can make it a one-possession ball game. Lavender, good look, bad result. And that is usually money yeah. for Jantel Lavender. It's just absolutely almost perfect. Moore with a long three with about four seconds left on the shot clock. And that's it for the third quarter. So Los Angeles, they're in this thing. Only down by four. At Finally get on track. How can she get more of that in the fourth quarter? Well, they're doing a great job on Christy. Now, they're, they're playing out. They're not helping off of her. So we've got to do a good job of getting her open. She's got to take advantage of her opportunities in transition. But the main thing for us is to move the basketball. Speaking of moving the basketball, as bad as it's looked at times tonight, you're only down by four. How can you move it and be more efficient? Well, we've got to commit to doing it, one. You know, and they're taking, trying to take some things away. So, you know, you can't let that congest us and make that stagnant. So we've got to continue to move the ball and play both sides of the floor. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Holly. Minnesota in that first quarter scored 26 points. Since then, only 28 points. 
And Los Angeles has stuck in there, Hunt hanging around, and they are only down four. Again, these are the teams tied with the best record in the league. The winner of this game will have the all-important tiebreaker as we head towards the playoffs. How many times did Brian Adler say, move the ball? So let's see if the Sparks do that. They are in this possession. Shot clock winding down, Mecca got one off, and it was just short. And Christy Tolliver out of the play to the stumble. Tolliver guarding Maya Moore right now. Sylvia, that's what worked early in this game with Sylvia fouls on offense. Still saying she went to Cheryl Reeve and said, I want to be more involved in pick and rolls. I want to get out of the paint, move around. That's when I'm at my best. And she has been at her best at doing just that. Parker, nothing doing still. <laughs> Cheryl Reeve arguing that it should be a jump ball. Going back to that last possession, Sylvia sets a good screen. Defense does not rotate over in time, and still with an easy finish. Oblumike off the inbound, perfection. Well, and that was because Minnesota was still arguing the last play. Candace Parker, two for 10 from the floor tonight. Los Angeles can cut it to two. Minnesota changing up, excuse me, LA changing up their defensive assignments. Tolliver, one three, make it still one three as that one just came off the back. Iron. Whalen gets a screen from McCarville, the former teammates at the University of Minnesota. Whalen left open, and that misfires. That's only the fourth shot Lindsay's taken tonight, and then tried to draw the charge, but instead a blocking foul is called on Whalen. That is three on Lindsay. Right here, hustle for the basketball. But Waylon does not get there to establish legal defense in time. I thought that was a good call by the officials, and Waylon was already falling before the contact was made. Lindsay Whalen is like a contact-seeking missile, isn't she? She just she loves she it. loves it, thrives off of it. Augustus now on Tolliver. Oliver inside, nice. Abumake with the assist. Again, focusing on the paint. There has to be balance when the outside shots are not falling. And looky here, we've got a two-point game. Fouls rolls, double team, good defense. Oh. And Sylvia still was able to score. Tough. Fouls eight for 10 from the field. It looked like L.A. did everything right on that defensive sequence, and Sylvia still beat him. And that's a good-looking shot for Talbot. She's got some good looks in the last few possessions from the outside. Maya, little short arm, three-pointer that falls. Talking about seeking, Maya seeking out the shots behind the screen. You have got to get out on her aggressively. It's her second three of the night. Sylvia Fowles has scored eight of Minnesota's last 13 points, and what was a 56-54 advantage quickly becomes a seven-point lead, so L.A. takes a timeout. Well, Minnesota got going behind her teammates. She actually stood up, kind of burst into the huddle, and showed them, hey, too many players clustered on this side of the floor. When we're running offense, everybody has to do their job on the play. People not in position, making her voice heard down the stretch with 649 to play. And that's leadership. It's called accountability. Everyone has to do their part. And Neca's understanding of the game, her basketball IQ has increased tremendously. So she knows what's supposed to happen on the floor. She's letting her teammates know. Now she's in her fifth year. And there she is attacking, got it blocked, and stuck with it. And when she first came here, I think she 
And she would probably admit to this too. She kind of acquiesced. It was Candace Parker's team, but no more of that. She's taken over. She's a brilliant leader having a great year. More. Nice look to fouls. Nice read. I'll tell you this, Minnesota's offense runs so well with Janelle McCarvel's on the floor because she reads the defense. She sets solid screens. She gets Maya open. Fouls 9 of 11 from the floor. Yeah, it's because McCarvel's numbers are not going to pop your eyes out, but it's the little thing she does, like you said, with her screening. Shot clock winding down. Lavender short. And you want that shot. I mean, Jantel yeah. Lavender is one of the best shooters, most consistent shooters in this league. 55% from the floor, but she's one of six tonight. Usually money with those 15-footers. Fouls. Overpassed. And good, gave it away. Good defense at the rim by NECA. LA is a team also that is the best three-point shooting team in the league, but tonight, three of 13, three of 14 now. And when they don't shoot the three well, that's when they really struggle. You know, they struggle to find that balance on the offensive end. They can't get the floor open enough for Candace and Neca to really consistently work together on the inside. 21% from the floor for threes tonight. They average about 39% best in the league coming in. And Ana Dobovich has been good the last few games and getting them some outside shots. But when she got in, when that second unit got in early in the game, they took away the rhythm. And mm -hmm. L.A. really has not recovered. And we've not seen her for a while. Parker working on more. Got it. And it's 3 of 11, excuse me, now from the floor. Five-point lead with under four and a half to go. Best record in the league on the line for these two teams. Moore pulls up over NECA. Ooh, cool as can be. Maya said, what did y'all say about NECA's defense again? <laughs> oh, watch this. Tolliver. Going to the rim, McCarville with the defense. And now Moore runs the floor on the other oh, end. Man. Maya Moore had only four points at the half, has 12 here in the second. Huge back-to-back -back possessions there for Maya Moore in Minnesota. Minnesota had their lead cut to two, now a 12-4 run. And they have put some distance between themselves and the Sparks. Ball to the floor, easy run out there for Maya Moore. And this is what you need. You need a big shot maker. Pull up and score for Maya Moore. Go to WNBAstore.com, or if you're in New York, the NBA store on Fifth Avenue has them. 100% of the proceeds will be donated to Bright Pink, and they are awesome shirts. Yeah, and you appreciate the effort of the WNBA, their players, to bring awareness and to raise awareness for breast cancer. I mean, these, this pink is just amazing to see the building full of people who want to support. Minnesota up by 10 after LA had cut the lead to two. Maya Moore and Sylvia Fowles have been putting a dagger in the Sparks. This is the biggest lead of the night now for the Lynx. This is Maya time. She loves it. She thrives, just waits for that, wants the ball in big moments. Chelsea Gray with the tough bucket. Minnesota with 28 points this half, all but four points coming from Sylvia and Maya. Carson gets the rebound under three minutes to go. Underneath, good defense by Moore to knock it away. Maya's everywhere. You're not going to get anything on that first pass. Minnesota is too good defensively. And though the Sparks are long, they've got size. Minnesota really sticks to the scouting report. They know where to be in position, and they know where you want the ball to go. 
Maya Moore with a terrific second half after being uncharacteristically quiet in the first. And Los Angeles not looking like LA at all. They lead the league in assists with 21. They only have 10 tonight. Lead the league in three-point shooting. And they're putrid three for 14 tonight from outside. And you got to give a lot of credit to Minnesota's defense. No today. doubt. I mean, they mix it up. They go deep on their bench so they can give you different looks on the defensive end. Switching different players into different positions, and Maya's feeling it now. <laughs> Maya's hitting shots, Maya's getting rebounds, doing whatever she has to do. And on the road, it's so important to take the crowd out of a game. And I'll tell you, this L.A. crowd has been outstanding this season. They've only lost one home game, but tonight they've been a non-factor. And the one home game they lost was to this Minnesota Lynx team back in June. Best record in the league goes to the winner. And we, we talked to Maya before the game. She said, this is fun. I'm supercharged. We play for this kind of game. And it has been the Maya and Sylvia show in this fourth quarter. Finding, in the second half, really. Finding a way to get it done. I mean, it has been Sylvia really gotten acclimated with this offense and the defense and the expectations fitting in seamlessly. Two minutes to go. Maya now has 11 of Minnesota's last 13 points. Augustus buries it. And when you've gotten to the point in the game where you have to try to force some turnovers to get easy baskets and it forces you to leave Simone Augustus wide open on the, ring, on the wing, that's not a good feeling. Defense Brunson with the block from behind. Minnesota a minute and a half away from winning their fifth game over the last six here in Los Angeles. And most importantly, they're going to have the best record in the league when they leave this building. And it hasn't been the prettiest of nights. But that just gives you an even better appreciation for what Minnesota does night in and night out because they find a way to win. Defending champions. They are heating it up now. They have, with this win tonight, it's going to be 10 out of their last 11. As we approach a minute to go, both Minnesota and Los Angeles have four games remaining. L.A. just one game on the road. That's at Seattle. Minnesota, the first of four road games. But Cheryl Reeves' team has looked really insane, moving in the flow of their offense, finding open spots to score, and then who else? Maya Moore taking over late in this game, finding scoring opportunities. She's got the eye of the tiger and understands how important this game is in the big picture. Coming back from the Olympics, we asked her about that. She said, it helps that I came back to this team. It's a good team, loves the bench, says she could go full out when she's out there. The bench comes in and gives them quality minutes. Maya has 12 points in the fourth quarter, 12 over 20. That one almost went in. Moore and Fowles, 41 points between them. Gray has been good. Now she's played some really quality minutes in this game. I mean, and Christy Tolliver has been out for a while now. 15 points for Gray is a new season high and one off of her career high. But the Minnesota Lynx are going to get out of here with their second win here in L.A., and they're going to go to 25-5 and five on the season. 20-second timeout. We're going to keep it here. So Los Angeles started this season 11-0 and 20-1. and one. They did have a couple of wins, three wins in a row, in fact, coming into this. But Candace Parker struggling, 3 of 11 from the floor today. still coaching them up. Cheryl Reeve with the highest winning percentage of any coach in the history of this league has three rings. And right now, you think they're the favorite for a fourth? Oh, for sure. I mean, I picked Minnesota before the season Come even on. started. When you look at the core group they have returning, 
Gia Perkins has been a great addition. Natasha Howard's having an outstanding season. So it only gets better in Minnesota. Go, 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 Sandrine go. Gruda, number seven in pink, checking in, just signed by Los Angeles after playing for France in the Olympics. They had her eye on her all season, and Gruda gets the bucket. And that's the seventh assist for Candace Parker. She's got 10.7 assists and eight rebounds. So didn't score a lot, but contributing other ways. LA has scored the last seven points to cut this. And they finish with San Antonio, does LA. And San Antonio is the only team that's been mathematically eliminated from the playoffs. So both teams with some challenges. Atlanta comes in here on Thursday to play LA. They had a good win today over Phoenix. They did, who I thought was going to make a push after the playoff. They did, excuse me, the Olympic break. They made a little push, but they collapsed here in recent games. Minnesota out of timeouts now. Whalen foul by Essence Carson. Sparks over the limit. So Lindsey Whalen, who was three for four from the line, goes back. Lindsey was seven points tonight. More WNBA action coming your way on Sunday. NBA TV is a doubleheader. New York taking on Dallas at 4.30 Eastern, then the Sparks in Seattle for their last road game of the year at 7 Eastern. And a week from tonight, we look forward to this one. Minnesota at Chicago on ESPN2. WNBA.com and the WNBA app have all your information. And Chicago playing so really well. Fun. It's going to be so fun with the new playoff format. Trying to see where teams are landing. Home court advantage is a big thing if you're going to be in the, one of those first two rounds and it's a single elimination game, so a lot on the line. And Minnesota with this win tonight clinches that double bye into the semi. I survived single elimination and then I survived another single elimination in round two. I don't think you want to play that team because that's a team that has survived and advanced and is feeling good about themselves, so I don't know which is better. I'm, I'm kind of... We'll see, this is the first year of this format, both the semifinals and the finals, a best of five. Perkins fouling Gray on a three-point shot. If Chelsea Gray can come on strong, that is really going to help LA. She's capable, but just getting used to playing here and her and the expectations, and she can take Tolliver off the ball. She can give them another guard option because there have not been a lot of contributions. The further you go down the bench tonight for Ryan Agler. Chelsea's just tied her career high with 16 points. Parker and Tolliver tonight have combined seven for 22, two of nine from three. And that's not going to get it done for the best three-point shooting team in the league. And credit Minnesota for taking that away from them. You know, they didn't give them... They did have some clean looks, but I thought that Minnesota kept enough pressure on them that they were rushed when they were taking those shots or they were out of rhythm when they were taking those shots, and that's part of defense as well. Chelsea Gray with a new career high tonight in points. 17. Puts up another one, and that goes in! Chelsea Gray cuts it to a two-point lead. Not so fast. That was a three. She chases down the rebound and gets that shot up. Chelsea Gray said it ain't over in L.A. Chelsea Gray hitting only 21% of her threes coming into the night. This has been a good night for her. And that's the part of her game that has not come along like I thought it would. She was a really good three-point shooter at Duke, but this season has not shot it well from long range. Well, that was a big shot. Chelsea Gray has scored eight points in the last 29 seconds. And as you see, a new career high. And now Whalen at the line. Brunson coming back in for McCarville. Lindsey Whalen can effectively put this away with this shot. 
LA has one timeout left. Minnesota none. Missed it? Doesn't matter. Ball game. Minnesota survives. Chelsea Gray with a flourish at the end. But Minnesota takes it 77 to 74, leading for the vast majority of this game. The defending champs right now with the best record in the league. Yeah, and if these teams win out, it comes down to head to head. Well, guess what? Minnesota has put themselves in position to have home court advantage in the playoffs. Parker and T Tolliver's really struggling. Give credit to Minnesota's.